Hi everybody, it's Dr. Magnifico from Jared's Full Vet and Polly.com. It is Saturday. It's actually Saturday, the first week in December. I actually am doing my Sunday with Serafina on Saturday because I don't work tomorrow. We are back into teams and because of the holiday schedule, so because of uh, Christmas and New Year's falling on the same day, a week apart and being closed a half day before, it meant that the teams were not really fair. So we have decided to do kind of alternating Friday, Saturday, Sunday schedules so that the, we can keep the hours fair amongst everybody. Um, so today I'm working Saturday. I never work a Saturday. And I have off tomorrow, which I'm I'm super excited to have a Sunday off. So, so here's my Sunday with Serafina. I had a question from a very good friend who's a client who also has kept me very well fed this year. And she said that her friend was dropping their pet off for a dental procedure at another clinic and the clinic had her sign a form about DNR. So DNR is do not resuscitate. So what, what that owner wanted to do if that pet became became critical you know do they want to do all life-saving methods or do they want a dnr that's something that kind of came to us from the human side so for some of these you know critically ill or really high risk surgeries we we ask about dnrs and she said it really scared her and did we do that here and i said no we don't do it here, but we should, because really everybody should be asked that, and it does happen that we get these guys under anesthesia and something happens, and we worry about whether or not we do everything to pull them out of it, or whether or not, you know, especially for some of the guys who already have a lot going on, whether or not we, we don't do every, take every, every means um, available to try to preserve life. And she said it really scared her, and I thought to myself, well, damn straight, it should have scared her. Um, not not scaring her about the DNR part, about the anesthesia part. I do surgery twice a week, so I do surgery on Mondays and Wednesdays. I have to tell you, there isn't a Sunday night or a th Tuesday night or a Monday morning or a Wednesday morning that I'm not scared to pieces. Um, there are a lot of veterinarians who don't do surgery anymore because it is so scary. Anesthesia has an inherent risk. So when we say inherent risk, it means that just the act of anesthesia is an inherent risk for for adverse reaction whether that's anaphylaxis or death any of us going under anesthesia have the possibility of not waking up it is an inherent risk with anesthesia and it scares the life out of me it scares me to pieces so much so that i really ask myself whether or not i am comfortable continuing to do this and i have to weigh which surgeries i'm comfortable enough to do knowing that i might not see my patient on the other end of it so for everybody who thinks that a spay a neuter a dental cleaning a whatever is just so routine that we don't worry about it anymore it's anesthesia and we do worry about it and i worry about it a lot every single case um, I've done it for a long time and I'm comfortable with understanding what I have to do for these procedures, but there is no time in my life that I'm ever not going to put a patient under anesthesia and worry about them not waking up. So, um, be really careful. Every time we're talking about a procedure, you have to be, you have to be weighing the risk of that procedure, of not doing that procedure with the risk of anesthesia. Sometimes it's a no brainer. Sometimes we have to do surgery. Sometimes we get a patient who's bleeding out and if we don't get that bleeding under control, they're going to die. Sometimes we go in and take out a splenic mass that is bleeding and if we don't get it out they're going to die sometimes we have to get rid of a tumor that's gotten so big it's become it's become um, it's it's influenced that patient's quality of life you know sometimes it's a painful eye that's so painful these guys won't eat um, sometimes it's an ear infection that's gotten so bad we have to talk about removing the ear canal so there are inherent risks with everything and yes all of us should be asking you whether or what you want us to do if something happens while your patient is under anesthesia for all of the splenic masses that I do for all of the pios for all of the suspected cancers that I do I tell people the following I'm going to open your dog or cat up I don't know what I'm gonna find until I get there and I want you to be available via phone once I get in because if I get in and I'm removing a splenic mass and it looks like all of the rest of the abdomen is seated with neoplasia or cancer, then I don't know if waking your dog up is the right thing to do. So I'm gonna call you, I want you to be available via, via phone. I wanna call you, I'm gonna tell you what I'm finding and then I wanna be able to make a decision together. And lots of times I'm having that discussion with people before we even go under anesthesia. I want to have a plan which addresses best case scenario, worst case scenario, and then kind of allows us some room anytime in between. So th really think about things. 
for all of you guys in the spay and neuter department, this is where it really becomes a problem. I have a lot of people who never spayed their dogs and spayed certainly has the bigger consequence here if you don't do it um, because we worry about pyometra. They never spayed their dog because they were so afraid of anesthesia and then their dog gets a pyometra. So they've got a uterine infection that we're worried about becoming septic or rupturing in the abdomen and now it's acutely life-threatening and that fear of anesthesia when that pet is healthy is made infinitely worse because now they're unhealthy and they need anesthesia. So when you get a dog or a cat, you should be planning on spaying. You should put it on the calendar. So if you get your puppy or kitten at eight weeks old, you put it on your calendar for six or eight months. You, It's like the no smoking date on your calendar. You put it on your calendar, you make all of the plans, you take all of the necessary precautions and you stick to it. It is far better to have a pet who's spayed and neutered when they're young and healthy than trying to do it when they're older and incapacitated because there's a disease process going on. If you have any questions about anesthesia, about DNRs, about what forms to fill out, um, you can ask me anytime here at Jared's Full Vet or you can ask me for free at Pobbly.com. I wanna say one other thing. If you're signing anything anywhere, I don't care where that is, I don't care what you're signing, you ask for a copy of it. I think it's really, I think it's really bold and obnoxious of all of us to be asking you guys to be signing forms and then not giving you a copy. You're signing something. You're signing something that is going to limit your legal repercussions and limit your ability to have follow-up in almost every single case. So you should ask for a copy of that. You should also ask for a copy of that long before you have to come in and do it. So if your vet's gonna have you sign a copy for drop-off for hospitalization, drop-off for boarding, drop-off for surgery, you can ask for that, that in advance. And you should know what you're signing and then you should get a copy of that before you leave. Every time you leave a veterinary clinic or any, any place, you should have all the copies of everything that you signed and all the information they've gone over with you. You should have your own file at home because I promise you that your veterinarian has a file on you. If you need any help with anything, you can find me at pobbly.com. Take care. Keep those questions coming. I really love to answer questions from you guys. I think it's much more pertinent. Take care. Have a good weekend for those of you having a weekend and have a safe holiday if I don't see you beforehand. Take care. Bye.